Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 45 today and we are back for the final episode of season 5 in this Builder Nation story. And we've got a chance to complete our first domestic treble with the Welsh Cup final. A massive opportunity against Haverford West, a side that held us earlier in the season, but that we comprehensively beat in the last league game of the season. And with a goal difference of plus 96 at the end of the year, particularly domestically, we've been very dominant. And we'd love to continue that with one last victory today. Nothing will eclipse the European run that ended in the last episode, of course. But if you're looking forward to this big cup final and a chance at a first domestic treble, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Of course, we'll have our end of season review as well. Fingers crossed a very positive one. And we'll look ahead to what we'd like to do as we move towards the summer transfer window. If you want to stay up to date with all of that action in the future, as well as our new club in the head coach, our live stream series and the podcast channel, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll find links to all the playlists in the eye above, as well as the other channel I've mentioned. And thank you so much for your incredible support. I hope you're still enjoying it as much as I am. But let's go and have a look at the schedule for the few games we've played off camera. You were obviously with me for those massive games in Europe, an incredible tie against Gladbach. And since then, back-to-back -back wins away from home in slightly more reserved settings, not quite the, the 50, 60,000 Borussia Park. But away to Cardiff Met Uni, a 2-0 win, Badebo and Duffy with the goals there. And in a rotated side against Haverford West, saw two goals for Paul Glatzel, one for Joe Duffy and one for Luca Canell. So we come back today to face the same opponents Haverford West that we beat in the final league game. And to be fair, after that initial draw earlier in the season, we have found them pretty easy opponents. So I'm hoping that will stay the case today. I'd love to wrap up the treble and then we can look ahead to what should be a very exciting summer. The dynamics are looking good. We've got most of the players we wanted tied down as well as a lot of the staff, it must be said. And with a few players to come back from loan, a few more potentially going out. We've got a lot of work to do in this window. I'm hoping the European run will have made a difference. And you may remember at the end of the last episode, we had a look at the sort of nation coefficient to see how things were changing. Because obviously we looked at it previously and we saw that despite the good season, we weren't going up quite as quickly as we'd hoped. And we were going to be up with sort of Finland in around 37th, 38th place. But at a club level, in terms of seedings, we have gained 15 coefficient points this year. Which means next season, 19 points. And if you look at the clubs we're around at the moment, that is going to jump us a huge amount. I mean, we're going to go up hundreds of places. I'm just trying to look for where these are regularly popping up. There's 126 there in Monaco who have popped up. But other than that, we are talking about 150th in the rankings we're going to be. Probably in the top 150. And in fact, even a lot of them above that are 16-17s next year. So we could potentially be very close to the top 100. And that's going to make a big difference to us as a club. TNS, it does look like, have wrapped up European football. They finished second on 52 points, despite making a pig's ear at the end of the season. And if we beat Hatherford West today, that will wrap up third for Connors Key, leaving the next four sides to battle it out. Barrytown United, who finished well in the bottom half, with Cardiff Met Unit, Carmarthen, and Hatherford West today's opponents. But don't forget, if they nick a victory, not only will it be a famous trophy for them, they get European football too. So let's not hold it up any longer, shall we? Let's go and see what happens. So we're going to try and put out our strongest 11 today. I'll rotate it back from the league side. And we'll be back in a minute to go through the lineup that is taking on this Welsh Cup final. Well, it was a very tough decision to make, particularly with only five subs. But we have decided to go with the following 11. Gregor Zabret, of course, in goal. Hankin and Bolton, the fullbacks, with Toll and Badebo at centre-half. Williams, Taylor, Cannell and Cottrell, the midfield diamond. And then Max Dean and Joe Duffy back up front. Glatzel with two goals in the last game on the bench. Brooks, Harness, Benson, all in good form. They drop out as well. Even press back on the bench at the expense of the Irishman. And then we've left out of the squad entirely. The likes of Kieran Clark, who's been on fire at left back. Ethan Vaughan, who's been on fire at right back. And a couple of the other quality youngsters, the likes of Ryan Hughes. But that's the 11 we've gone for. I hope it will be good enough. And if they play at the best, they should beat Haverford West. Let's go and have a look, get into the game. Can we wrap up the domestic treble? Six changes from the final league game of the season, but a very strong Haverford West side. Pretty much their first 11. 
but not as much quality as you'd expect. Certainly not as some of the other teams in that top six. I think you'd call them the surprise package based on their quality this season. To get in the top six and get to the cup final, it's an epic achievement really from them. So let's see what they do today as we get into the first half. It's Haverford West v Bangor City and this is our big chance at the treble. Let's see if we can complete it. Let me know if you think we can. As we've got a corner kick on the right hand side, Williams takes it. Out swinger headed away, 10 minutes gone now, but Debo gets it back to Jake Taylor. The centre half staying up after the corner and Taylor again has got a chance to spray it. Finds Toll who was just making his way back. Gets it wide to Williams, the corner taker. Taylor picks it up again though and Cottrell moves deep to collect the ball. Toll brings it forward, comfortable in possession yet again and he's back to Jack Hankin. Leaves a man at the back but finds Badebo who's still up on the left wing. He cuts it back to Williams. We don't want to lose it here because we've committed a lot of men forward. I think we've only got one back with there too. We have. Williams gets it to Badebo again. We're being forced back. It's an excellent press from Haverford West, but we've broken it with Dean. One pass does the trick. Duffy hits the post. The rebound is in. The keeper, unfortunate there. He went down to try and save it. And Joe Duffy gets the luck of the woodwork. Second time lucky it's in. And it's 1-0 to Bangor City. Ten minutes gone. Could be a long evening for Haverford West. And on the right-hand side, is Jack Hankin to take the throw in. Play short to Jake Taylor. Hankin in. Cottrell edge just over. In fact, I think Joe Duffy got there first. Still over the bar though, a fantastic start and a chance for us to make it two again. This time we play out from the back with Owen Toll and Hankin. He's charging forward, no real pressure on him. Finds a lovely through ball to Joe Duffy and he's into the box unopposed again and he's at the post again. Turner this time gets to the rebound first. The defender hacks it behind for a corner. But Joe Duffy, what is going on? Every time he shoots, he hits that post. This time the corner's in. He's just beaten in the air by Harden. It falls out for Dean on the left. Can't bring it under wraps. And it's out for a throw-in. 20 minutes on the clock. It's utter dominance for Bangor City. But this time, it's a throw on the right for Haverford West. Bolton will hack it clear though. And Max Dean's picked it up. We've managed to get two on two. Dean's so agile. He's so much quicker than the defenders. Gets into the box. Tries to cut it in. I thought he'd been greedy trying to shoot there. He somehow found the corner. Brilliant placement, brilliant finish. And it's 2-0 to Bangor City. And we're back yet again with Jack Hankin at right back. Surging forward now. Dean's up with him. Beats the offside trap, I think. And slides it under the keeper, who does so well to get a hand to it. And then he puts it behind for a corner. But it is dominance now. We've really got them on the ropes. And if we wanted to, and we keep our foot on the gas... We could make this four or five as Cannell picks it up on the right hand side. Finds Williams the corner taker. Cannell plays a one-two with Taylor. Taylor gets it into Dean and now Duffy. Duffy's got three off him. Hankins one. Dean's another. Gets to the byline. Can't quite keep it in. Just over hit there from Jack Hankin. And it's 2 0 with half an hour gone. Excellent display so far. Well, we reach half time, or in fact one minute of stoppage time to go as Bolton's got it on the left. It's not the fact we've had chances in this game for me. It's the fact that they've been such good ones. Real goal scoring opportunities. As Badebo lays Duffy in brilliant run. Good save by Callum James. You've got to say it. It should have been a goal but the keeper did his bit. Duffy had tried to dink it and Callum James read it. As Williams takes the in swinger. Creamer heads away. Shepard can counter here. Have we left ourselves a bit exposed? Shepard comes forward. It's a two on two. Goes left and Jack Hankin. What a tackle. The academy play-up makes a sublime intervention and it's 2-0 as the half-time whistle goes. Make sure we get our hands on the trophy is the message in the dressing room at half-time. And into the second half we go. 45 more of the same, please. As Hankin's got a throw on the right to Jake Taylor. Back to Hankin again. Beats a sliding challenge. Delivers early. Probably did the defender a favour there because he could have gone down and got him in serious trouble. Bolton delivers another cross though. Roberts flicks it away as far as Hankin on the right byline. Cuts it into Cottrell. Great header. Just over the bar. Couldn't quite direct it. Couldn't get under it. But another great chance for Bangor City. The Haverford West are coming forward. They're trying to create something. They're still throwing everything at it. It's back to Shepard on the edge of the box. His shot's just over. Good effort in the end. And Zabret was scrambling a bit there. But it is all Bangor City generally and Hankins throwing in again. 1-2 with Jake Taylor. Plays it a third time. Taylor delivers to Cunnell. Back to Bolton. Plenty of space. And his shot straight at Callum James. Not sure why he went weak foot there. But the keeper will take it. Did well to handle it. Did well not to spill it. And kept our vultures from swarming up front. As the long ball forward flicked on by Hicks. Taylor intervenes and he finds Roberts on the left. Hankin up against him again. 
Hasn't been beaten many times today. And again, he's forced his man backwards. As Hicks tries to switch it, Cannell intercepts. Duffy finds Cottrell. Williams in the holding role. Out wide to Hankin. Got acres of space to run into yet again. Had a brilliant game, the right back. Instead, goes all the way back to Toll. And that is a terrible ball forward. It falls for Hankin, though. The clearance was poor. He goes over the top. Max Dean in. On the volley just wide. I'm not sure about the commentary saying that's a sitter. An over-the-shoulder volley from outside the box. But nonetheless, a brilliant ball from the right back. And Max Dean, I guess you do expect him to take them. He's that good. But with 25 to go, we'll go and make a couple of changes. Because Cottrell in the number 10 hasn't had his best game. So Harness will come on for him. And in a holding role, we'll replace Williams with Benson. Two of the regulars this season probably deserve some minutes. And hopefully they can enjoy the cup final. I will think about Toll for press. Cannell's a bit tired, so maybe Brooks for him. And let's just try and see this out. As the ball comes in, Duffy heads in. And that's it. The tired man can come off. Cannell gets his assist. And Brooks is on. A last 15 minutes before his loan spell ends. And he's been a good servant. So he probably deserves this. And with just over 10 minutes on the clock, it's Gregor Zabret playing out again. We've seen this so many times as we've beaten the press, played through the lines. And Duffy gets in behind again. It's a brilliant run. Should be a goal. It's a good save by the keeper. Gets to the rebound, but he's a bit too wide. Delivers in towards Dean. Callum James deals with it. Excellent play again. And to be honest, we should be surprised that it's only three. We've been that good. As Wilson picks it up on the left for Haverford West. Finds Roberts. Chance to get a consolation, perhaps. Taylor nicks it, though. He's in no mood for that. Long ball forward to Dean. It's been a wonderful game of football. Brilliant entertainment. Duffy chases Harden, who manages to mop up well. And James clears long downfield. Only as far as Bolton, though, who's still prowling, still getting down the touchline. The through ball's too overhit, though. And James will beat Harness to it. It's a very long highlight, which makes me suspicious. You know what I think about those. As James goes long, it falls its way through to Bolton again. But Debo plays out. Is there going to be a goal from this? Brooks up to Duffy. Harness made the run, but then check back. Duffy on the left-hand side to Bolton. He finds Duffy again. Two in the middle. Harness is one. Dean's the other. And Max Dean with his 44 for the season. Makes it Haverford West nil. Bangor City 4. The domestic treble is wrapped up in style. And what a performance it's been in this final. Absolutely stunning. And there we go. Three minutes of stoppage time up. And the boys get to come and collect their medals. I'm at the back of the queue, ready to get my own. And we will get to lift the Welsh Cup trophy. A brilliant effort from these lads. After two years ago, as we said before, the opportunity to win the league goes begging. And this time, after that disappointment of just the League Cup, we have won the domestic treble with Bangor City. The Welsh Cup, the League Cup and the League. And we got to the quarter final of a European competition. The biggest season we will have in this build a nation save. Certainly the one that will make the biggest impact. And a fantastic end to a brilliant season. Now let's go and skip ahead to the review. So we can just go and marvel in these lads. What an effort. I'll see you in a moment. Time for the Bangor City end of season review then. You can see the three beautiful trophies laid out for us. Let's get through the new arrivals first. And I think top of the list in terms of average rating, Cottrell and Badebo shows just how important they were. The two boys we had on loan last year, we thought we had no hope of keeping them. They got released as free agents and they were willing to join. And as a result, they've got to have a domestic treble, a big European adventure. But there is no doubt in the impact that those two players have had on our season. Cottrell, 14 goals, 25 assists. Badebo, 47 appearances at the back. Luca Cannell, a brilliant signing as well. Had a real big impact on us. And that's the second build a nation he's done that at. And then Dexter Harness, another great one. A good squad player. Loads of goals off the bench. Jake Taylor, a bit more experience in the middle. Ethan Vaughan came back for a second stint, which is much appreciated. And even some of the younger players. Hughes and Clark have made an impact. Daniel Williams from Swansea, a brilliant player on a free agent. The only one that's really disappointed is Owen Toll. I hope it's just because he came in January and it was a little bit of a new surrounding. But I think next season, if he doesn't shine, we'll probably have to move him on. But overall, a brilliant season for us. A load of good new signings. Of course, the ones we moved on. Cammy Palmer did well at Coleraine. 15 assists in 43 games. Harbottle on loan at Slough, having a good season there. Paris Magoma, the one we didn't want to lose. My word, that's turned into a blessing in disguise. We've replaced him pretty well. And then a lot of those fringe players who haven't really had a huge amount of football elsewhere. Mo Silla has, but played poorly. And the rest have barely had a kick. 
So let's move on to the season results. We win the league with 92 points. A new Welsh league record, just four points dropped and a second successive invincible season. We wrap up European football for Connors Keat with that Welsh Cup final victory. We'll of course keep an eye on who wins the playoff. After last season, maybe we want it to be Carmarthen, although on paper, I'd probably say Barry are the best side. Joe Duffy was the top scorer of the competition, 26 goals thanks to his exploits at the end, and a brilliant board confidence because of a brilliant league performance. We cannot argue with it. Of course, we failed in the first qualifying round of the Champions League, but a narrow defeat against Malmo led to the biggest blessing in disguise. A stunning performance to get to the quarter-final of the Europa Conference. How the board confidence is an A+, I don't know. A wonderful run, victories at home to Ludacaretz against Zoria, a two-legged victory against Sparta Prague and Utrecht, and then a famous home win against Gladbach, where we narrowly went out in a two-legged defeat. A stunning run, a brilliant effort, and hopefully more of them to come next year. The SPFL Trust Trophy, perhaps the real disappointment. We went out on the first occasion to Rangers, and that's the one we've got left to win, of course, so we've got to try and do that. The Welsh Cup, a brilliant victory, though. Just Barry Town that gave us a scare, and the League Cup, much the same. Just the semi-final we found difficult. I would say in terms of the League Cup, though, the quarter-final against Kefin Albion, Grenell had a couple of shockers near the end. It did almost cost us. And that final was a lot tighter as well. We've got to bear that in mind. But in the midst of a European season, you can understand why it wasn't a priority. As it is, though, a biggest win, a 9-1 League Cup victory, a famous double hat-trick for Harness, a 6-0 match to remember away at Newtown in the league, and a 5-0 victory, hosted goal of the season. And that for to Benson. Not often a scorer for us. I think he only got three or four. Two. He got two goals, one in the Welsh Premier, and that was the one pick for the season. Not a bad effort. Let's move on to the off-the-pitch stuff and accolades then. The club's reputation is going up. From one star to one and a half, let's help that build again, particularly with the European coefficient. And fingers crossed that will increase the domestic prize money, the domestic broadcast revenue, and help some of the other sides turn pro. Of course, all of the favourites selling their shirts. Duffy not up there, the top scorer, a bit of a surprise. But the best 11, it pretty much picks itself. Jimmy Jarrett at left back. I just wonder if we hadn't lost him in January, could we have perhaps stayed in the, the European run for longer? He didn't even play for Norwich. It's so frustrating. They just left him rotting in the reserves. But aside from that, an absolutely sensational season. Manager of the year for me. There's some other news we'll talk about in a second. And all of the stuff that we'd expect on the pitch. The player awards. They must have been so hard to choose. One's Max Dean. One's Joe Duffy. Ryan Hughes signing of the season. Benson goal of the season. They're all spread out pretty nicely. History in the making. A famous domestic treble. And that European run that will never be forgotten. The final thing I want to finish with though, and I've gone back down to yesterday, is the Hall of Fame for the Domestic Welsh League. We have gone to the top above Craig Harrison, the former TNS man. A brilliant effort with four domestic divisions and five domestic cups. Of course, three of those, the Welsh Premier League, won the second tier, and one year where we bottled it, of course. But three League Cups, two Welsh Cups, and we're starting to make our mark. So I really hope you've enjoyed it. I can't wait for next season. I'm just looking forward to another European run. We've got to make some improvements to the team. We need a keeper. We need a left back. Quite frankly, in Europe, so Brett and Bolton aren't cutting it. We could probably do with a centre half. And we could probably do with a bit more depth. But that's something we're going to have the opportunity for now. A brilliant club on the up. The Builder Nation starting to take shape. And we will be keeping our eyes closely on Europe next year to see how the other Welsh sides do in the qualifiers. Hopefully a busy transfer window over in Wales, not just for us, but for the other clubs too. And I hope you'll come and join me next time round for the summer transfer special, probably a European qualifier too, as we start to make this long and exciting adventure happen all over again. Thank you so much for your continued support this season as we continue to build a nation story. If you did enjoy it, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. The head coach where things are taking shape with our new club is back tomorrow at 3.30. And we'll be back in this one with a transfer special in just two days time. Links to all the playlists in the eye above as well as the podcast channel too. But a massive thank you for watching, for your continued support with the channel. And I hope to see you next time for the big transfer special. The road to European glory starts again. And this Build-A-Nation story continues to take shape. I'll see you there.